Politicians and pastors, officers and opposition, chiefs and commissioners, investors and individuals, they were all in on it. A full and fruitful visit did the three members of parliament from the UK have, and it's how they described a whirlwind visit in a late day media briefing on Thursday. We completed, I'm glad to say, every single item in this program. We looked at the program in great detail. We discussed the program in great detail. Uh, we crammed absolutely the maximum amount that we, we could. Uh, I have to say, I don't know whether my colleagues would take, this, I'd take the same view, I hope they would. I think if we were doing it all over again, I don't think we'd do it anything differently. That is Sir John Stanley, who was the spokesperson for the Foreign Affairs Committee group, which for two days interviewed a cross-section of residents as a part of a process spearheaded by the British Foreign and Commonwealth Office. Sir Stanley, joined by parliamentary colleagues Paul Keach and Greg Pope, visited two of the four countries selected to be seen during this week. Stanley explained that there were three FAC groups in all. We've had meetings um, with the Premier, Dr. Mizik, and his cabinet. We've had meetings with the leader of the opposition, um, Mr. Lloyd Seymour, and his colleagues. We've had a meeting with the chairman-designate of the Human Rights Commission, Mrs. Quelch Mizik. We've had meetings with church leaders. We've had meetings with members of the Financial Services Commission. We've met the Chief Justice. We've met the Chief Auditor. We've met the Complaints Commissioner and we've met the police commissioner. We've also seen a very considerable number of people from the business community and the professional community and a number of individual local residents. Among the reasons the Turks and Caicos was selected from the 14 overseas territories to visit is because of the surge of communication from the residents of the country. While Sir Stanley declined categorizing the correspondence, he did admit the influx had influence. Go to our website and you will see there all the memoranda that we have now had and you must make your own judgment. And uh, I don't think it's for us to gloss the memoranda we've had. We've had them on a, a wide variety of subjects. Um, there are some have been, um, we've had some, for example, on the question of the Olympic status of, of the Turks and Caicos Islands. And I think it would be entirely fair to say that the volume of representations we had and the memorandum we had from the Turks and Caicos Islands was certainly a, a factor, a, a material factor in, in, in us making a judgment to include the Turks and Caicos in this visit. Sir Stanley also admitted that it has been too long since an exercise like this one, but said in formal meetings with the House Speaker, the Honorable Clayton Green, and opposition leader, the Honorable Floyd Seymour, last November, has started something which will continue. But we as a committee um, have not done a major inquiry into all the overseas territories for a very considerable time, and we felt it was now very much overdue to put all the other pressing things aside, all the, uh, the crisis in the Middle East and Iraq and Afghanistan, all of those of which we have been focusing on, we felt that just for these next uh, few weeks, few months, we should focus on the overseas territories, which is what we're doing. We will be taking further public evidence, and we have a very important public evidence session, which we're going to be taking on March the 26th from the Minister of State in the Foreign and Commonwealth Office, Mej Mun. That is public. It will be uh, fully available to the media and indeed to members of the public who want to come in and listen to that session. And it is the committee's practice that as soon as a transcript is available, and that will be within a matter of days of the all evidence session, the full transcript of that evidence session will be available on our website and so you will be able to see the whole of the question and answer session that takes place on March the 26th. The process is transparent according to this group who told News 4 that you can read reports for yourself online.